It was back in 2003 that a Harvard sophomore launched an in-school website called Face Smash from his dorm room, designed to rate female students as hot or not. Eventually shut down, 19-year-old Mark Zuckerberg launched what would become Facebook a year later, a networking platform akin to MySpace, another social media site at the time. Remember that? Once it picked up traction at colleges across the nation and big money from big investors rolled in, Mark and Facebook became unstoppable, literally. In fact, Zuckerberg's college project expanded beyond anyone's imagination, opening offices around the world, helping young activists across the Middle East coordinate Arab Spring protests and even influencing elections. It transformed how and to what effect we communicated. And as new players in the social media revolution emerged, Facebook didn't just play with them, it swallowed them whole. In 2012, it acquired Instagram for $1 billion in a bid to exploit their rise and challenge the competitor Snapchat. In 2014, for just $19 billion, it bought out the world's most popular messaging app, WhatsApp, bringing under its wing over 2 billion international users. These purchases gave the Harvard dropout turned billionaire, who can't be fired or replaced as CEO of Facebook, control over the world's three most used social media and messaging apps, a total value of more than $800 billion, which is greater than the GDP of Saudi Arabia, and earning Zuck the man a spot in the world's exclusive centibillionaires club. But has a moment of reckoning arrived for the world's biggest social network? While the US is still completely polarized when it comes to Joe Biden's election victory, with, as we discussed earlier, attorneys general from different states and parties taking different sides, Nearly everyone agrees they don't like what Zuckerberg has been up to. Yesterday, both the US Federal Trade Commission and 46, yes, 46 state attorneys general from red states and blue filed lawsuits against Facebook saying its expansion has broken antitrust laws or basically it's become a monopoly by crushing its competition. They're calling for the deals with Instagram and WhatsApp to be undone, a breakup of Facebook's social media empire. It comes after an announcement last year that lawsuits will also be filed against other tech giants accused of similar monopolization tactics, Google, Apple, Amazon. If successful, this could lead to the first major overhaul of antitrust laws that many argue are antiquated, written when likes and shares and an unimaginable accumulation of personal data in private hands didn't exist. But, but, is it too late? Has Zuckerberg already created something too big to break up? Joining me to discuss this is Zephyr Teachout, professor of law at Fordham University and author of Break Em Up, Recovering Our Freedom from Big Ag, Big Tech and Big Money. She was also a surrogate for Bernie Sanders and ran herself for New York Attorney General in 2018. Uh, Zephyr, thanks for joining me on the show. We almost all use Facebook in some shape or form, but Facebook's argument is they can't be a monopoly they're not controlling the supply or trade of a commodity like utilities. They're not even selling anything. And not only are there other social platforms out there, they point out that no one's required to join one anyways. It's just a coincidence that billions have. Do they have a point? Does their defense stand up? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the complaint filed by uh, the New York State Attorney General, and as you said, joined by almost all the other state attorney generals, is incredibly powerful on this point. When it comes to personal social networking, Facebook has a monopoly. We all know it. I mean, watch the moments when people get angry at Facebook for yet again breaking a promise. And there's a flurry of uh, uh, people saying on Facebook and Twitter that they're about to quit. And then they quit by going to Instagram owned by Facebook and then come back. And, and, and it, I, I make light of it, but, it's, a, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an extraordinary threat to both our economy and our democracy. I mean, you, you were talking earlier about the number of people who are on this who use it to learn about political information, to share ideas, and it's really a top-down controlled system. So this lawsuit is uh, incredibly sharp. Uh, in fact, one of the, one of the uh, complaints that you have seen immediately out of the gate from uh, Facebook's spokespeople is their, their biggest objection is that Basically, the gover government didn't act soon enough. That's not the way they say it. <laughs> what they say is yeah. um, the Federal Trade Commission uh, previously did not um, step in to stop the yes. acquisitions of WhatsApp and Instagram. And they're so, actually talking about it in a very disingenuous way. But go, go ahead. Yeah. 
Um, no, I was going to say they, on that they, very point. I just want to. I wanted to. So no, finish your finish your point, and then I'll jump. Yeah, in. Okay. Finish your point. Well, 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 what you'll hear is you'll hear Facebook spokespeople saying things like, "This is a do-over. Um, this has already been effectively litigated," and, and that's technically false. Um, uh, the Federal Trade Commission did not sue to stop these acquisitions, but that's different than uh, giving permission. And and what it really reveals, which is important, is not that Facebook is not a monopoly who has the power it has, not for quality, but because it's been able to um, uh, buy and bury competitors. But it actually reveals that we haven't had good antitrust enforcement for a long time. And they're right on that, <laughs> that yes. it's, been, it's been really decades of, of, of failure at the, um, at the federal level. Uh, indeed. And here's the thing about breaking it up. I just want to uh, unpack this idea of breaking up social media, because if you take away Instagram and you take away WhatsApp, which is the plan, you are basically just undoing some mergers and acquisitions that they did. And that would take years for a start. And you're still left with Facebook at the end of the day. You're not breaking up Facebook itself, which has been hugely consequential in influencing elections, even aiding a genocide in Myanmar. Is Facebook already too big to be broken up? Because even the people who want to break it up are not even aiming for Facebook. They're just saying, let's take Instagram and WhatsApp back away from them. You know, it's a really important point. I, I, I do think that the um, divestiture, the breakup that the states are asking for will actually be quite substantial and, and meaningful. Because one of the effects is that for the last okay. um, eight years, uh, you don't have any real choice. So Facebook has increased the amount of data it's taking from people, decreased the privacy options. And as a consumer, that's a problem. You don't have anywhere to go. As a small business, if you don't want to be next to conspiracy theories and the content that Facebook is pushing, you can't then choose to advertise on another site. So it will lead to competition on privacy. This is a, as a central to the um, complaint. And actually, uh, more transparency and competition for small businesses, which are so dependent and really struggling during this pandemic. But to your point. Yeah. Uh, it is absolutely necessary mm. and insufficient. I mean, the uh, the we're, what we're not talking about in this lawsuit is, um, for instance, vertical breakups. This is just about Facebook breaking up with other social networking sites, not actually breaking up Facebook and properties that compete on it. And we're not talking about the business model. And to me, the business model is the root issue. The idea that we allow our communications infrastructure to be governed by a system that makes money the more conspiracy theory, conflict-ridden content it promotes is a fundamental democratic problem. It's going to be easier to take on that problem when Zuckerberg doesn't have the political power he has right now because of the mm. um, of the monopoly. So, so you can't you can't separate so the, the economic the note, and political. On that point. note. So on the note of political power, in just over a month, we'll have Biden in office, who you've been quite critical of. Back at the start of this year, you wrote a piece in The Guardian saying Biden has a corruption problem, citing his close ties to the financial industry, to big pharma, to fossil fuel companies. Around that time, he also spoke out about Mark Zuckerberg. Have a listen. I've never been a fan of Facebook, as you probably know. I've never been a big Zuckerberg fan. I think he's a real problem. Not only we should be worrying about the concentration of power, we should be worrying about the lack of privacy and them being exempt, which you're not exempt. Zephyr, you're obviously in agreement with Biden on Facebook. Do you think he's the guy to get this kind of antitrust stuff done, regulation done, despite all his links to corporations and big, big interest groups? It is one of the biggest question marks about Biden. And he actually has a real opportunity. You know, if he listens to his friend Warren um, to really make a break with uh, not just the Trump era, but uh, the Obama era, which was a failure when it came to antitrust and really say, look, we need to uh, take on big ag, big tech, monopolization in the a hospital industry. I mean, there's monopolies everywhere and take an aggressive approach. And um, if he does, it's, it's not only good uh, policy, it's good politics because 
monopolization is one of the greatest drivers of inequality, but also why people feel politically out of power. So I, I, it's a question mark. Um, a lot comes down to who he appoints and making sure he doesn't appoint people who have ties to um, big tech, um, who've been serving corporate masters, because there's a deep ideology uh, that is both Democratic and Republican that uh, big, there's nothing, pro nothing wrong with these big companies. Zephyr, we've got 30 seconds left. I'm going to ask you what I asked Mark Pocan. You're a Bernie supporter. He is too. Uh, do you think Bernie Sanders should join the Biden cabinet or stay in the Senate? Yay or nay? Well, I'd love to see him in the Department of Labor. <laughs> we need a really, really strong um, voice there um, because we are facing uh, catastrophe for workers. We'll have to leave it there. Zephyr Teacher, thank you so much for your time and for your insights. We appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.